So I mentioned earlier uh, that we really don't have a firm number of how much is, is stolen uh, each year from American businesses. Uh, just recently, within the last few months, uh, John Huntsman, former U.S. Ambassador to China, also ran for president. Uh, he was uh, uh, the chair of this committee, the Intellectual Property Commission. They did the study. They found that the number was $300 billion. Uh, and that seems to be about right, $300 billion worth of U.S. intellectual property being stolen each year from our, uh, from our country. Uh, the report goes on to say uh, China is the number one uh, offender, uh, followed by uh, Russia. You also have Iran in there, Japan, Israel, uh, our old friend the, the French, uh, as well as some, some new players in there. And talking about China, uh, I, I've traveled myself to about 120 countries, uh, and I've done a lot of training with militaries and intel services of, of other places. And everywhere I go, I, I always find the book The Art of War by Sun Tzu. Uh, and I'm sure if, if everybody in the room hasn't read it, you at least know about it. And, you know, sports uh, coaches read it, businessmen read it, generals read it. Uh, but the Chinese, they really hold true to this, this doctrine. Um, as you can see, the, the opening uh, paragraph there uh, of, the, of the Art of War is, all warfare is based on deception. And the Chinese have really mastered this. And it all began in modern terms back with this program, China's 863 program. Uh, Deng Xiaoping, when he was the Chinese Communist leader uh, in China, started this program. 863, it started in 86, March of 1986, hence the number. But basically, the program was all about fast tracking the technology of China. And in order to do that, to make leapfrog gains, as they say, uh, they were going to steal and do by any means necessary to get this uh, valuable information. Here's a famous case study uh, that happened. This is one of the, the hardest hits that we took uh, from economic espionage. This is uh, Greg Chung, Dongfang J Greg Chung, uh, born in China, uh, naturalized U.S. citizen. He worked for Rockwell Engineering, which was then absorbed into Boeing. Uh, then he went on his own as a contractor for NASA. All this time, he had his uh, secret clearance, and all this time, he was working secretly for the Chinese. Uh, in fact, when Greg Chung was uh, actually arrested, he was arrested with 300,000 classi classified or sensitive documents of the NASA, NASA Space Shuttle Program stuffed in the crawl space of his house. Uh, and what he was essentially doing, he would put his garbage out the night before, and then in the morning he'd take out one special bag that had the classified documents and leave that for his uh, Chinese handlers, who would then pick up the classified documents uh, uh, in the morning. Uh, he was convicted uh, under the Economic Espionage Act, uh, but one of the few cases, and, and certainly one of the most damaging. Now, every time I, I give these talk, I always hear, oh, you're being tough on the Chinese. So to be an equal opportunity offender, I throw in this uh, slide in here. Uh, if you remember from 2007, uh, President uh, Yang Zemin, he wanted to have his version of Air Force One for the Chinese. Uh, as part of that, uh, he requested a 767 from Boeing. The, Bo uh, the plane was in, in Seattle. It then flew down to, uh, to Texas, where it was going to be refitted with the nice leather seats and all the amenities that go in a presidential plane. Uh, while it was in, in Texas, the plane was wrong with security, so nobody could mess with that plane. Uh, however, when the plane did make its way back to Beijing, uh, the Chinese came out and said, oh, we found 27 audio devices uh, hidden within the, uh, uh, within the uh, chairs and the, and the seats within the plane. Uh, and the last time I told this story to some intelligence officers, I got the response, oh, good, so they didn't find the other 10. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> 